K tutorial number 4, defining in plus plus, lesson 1. Here we learn how to extend the syntax of an existing language, both with new syntactic constructs and with more general uses of existing constructs. The latter, in particular, requires changes of the existing semantics. Consider the imp language as defined in lesson 4 of tutorial 2. Let us first add the new syntactic constructs with their precedences. Variable increment, which increments an integer variable and evaluates to the new value. Read, which reads and evaluates to a new integer from the input buffer. Print, which takes a comma-separated list of arithmetic expressions, evaluates all of them and then prints their values to the output buffer. We therefore define a new list syntactic category, AXPS, which we pass as an argument to print. Moreover, we declare print strict to evaluate its AXP list argument, and then the AXPS list construct also strict, so list of arithmetic expressions get evaluated whenever they reach the top of the KCL. We also go ahead and add strings as arithmetic expressions, because we intend print to also take strings, in order to print nice messages to the user. Halt which abruptly terminates the program, and spawn, which takes a statement and creates a new concurrent thread executing it and sharing its environment with the parent thread. Also, we want to allow local variable declarations, which can appear anywhere a statement can appear. Their scope ranges from the place they are defined until the end of the current block, and they can shadow previous declarations, both inside and outside the current block. The simplest way to define the syntax of the new variable declarations is as ordinary statements, at the same time removing the previous PGM syntactic category and its construct. Programs are now just statements. We are now done with adding the new syntax and modifying the old one. Note that the old syntax was modified in a way which makes the previous imp program still parse, but this time as statements. Let us then modify the configuration variable $PGM to have the sort STMT instead of PGM, and let us try to run the old imp programs, for example sum.imp. Know that they actually get stuck with the global declaration on the top of their computations. This is because variable declarations are now treated like any statements, in particular, the sequential composition rule applies. This makes the old imp rule for global variable declarations not match anymore. We can easily fix it by replacing the anonymous variable underscore, which matched the program's statement that now turned into the remaining computation in the case cell, with the cell frame variable dot dot dot, which matches the remaining computation. Similarly, we have to change the rule for the case where there are no variables left to declare into one that dissolves itself. We can now run all the previous imp programs, in spite of the fact that our imp++ semantics is incomplete and, more interestingly, in spite of the fact that our current semantics of blocks is incorrect in what regards the semantics of local variable declarations. Note that the old imp programs do not declare block local variables, which is why they still run correctly. Let us also write some proper in++ programs, which we would like to execute once we give semantics to the new constructs. 
Diff.imp is a program manifesting non-deterministic behaviors due to the desired non-deterministic evaluation strategy of division and the fact that expressions will have side effects once we add variable increment. We will be able to see all the different behaviors of this program. Challenge. Can you identify the behavior where the program performs a division by zero? If we run div.im now, it will get stuck with the variable increment construct on top of the computation cell. Once we give it a semantics in the next lesson, div.im will execute completely. Note that some people prefer to define all their semantics in a by need style. That is, they first write and parse lots of programs, and then they add semantics to each language construct on which any of the programs get stuck, and so on and so forth until they can run all the programs. IO.imp is a program which exercises the input-output capabilities of the language. Reads two integers and prints three strings and an integer. Note that the variable declaration is not the first statement anymore. SUM IO.imp is an interactive variant of the SUM program. Pond.imp is a program which dynamically creates two threads that interact with the main thread via the shared variable x. Lots of behaviors will be seen here once we give Spawn the right semantics. Finally, Locals.imp tests whether variable shadowing and shadowing works well. In the next lesson, we will prepare the configuration for the new constructs and we will see what it takes to adapt the semantics to the new configuration. Specifically, we will split the state cell into an environment cell and a store cell, like in Lambda++ in tutorial 3.